All right, so now we'll do the motion regarding the Commonwealth's motion for protective order pertaining to the DNA profiles of, ex of the investigating law enforcement officers. So I'll hear from the Commonwealth first, then I will hear from counsel for the officers, and then I'll hear the defendant's opposition. Who's arguing this for the defense? I will be, Your Honor. Okay. All right, I will hear you, Mr. Lally. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Your Honor, just to, to clarify on this, just a point I, I think may be misconstrued uh, based on the defendant's opposition. This is not a situation in which these troopers have consented to anything at this point. Uh, the purpose of filing the motion was to uh, try to gain some guidance from the court as to how mechani uh, mechanisms would be concerned with the collection of DNA, the retention of DNA, the destruction of DNA, and the, and the timing in regard to that prior to <clears throat> obtaining either Trooper Proctor or Sergeant Buchanan's consent in relation uh, to the taking of any bugle swab. So, how this sort of arises is uh, there is uh, a DNA report uh, in relation to the taillight of the defendant's vehicle. Uh, there are uh, three possible contributors uh, to that DNA mixture. One is uh, possibly identified as that of the victim, John O'Keefe. Uh, two others are unknown. There's been uh, rampant uh, sort of speculation, uh, accusations levied against uh, these particular troopers in regard to um, contaminating evidence or planting evidence and things of that nature. So. The exploration of this uh, is, is sort of uh, caused uh, by that in the sense of uh, the Commonwealth believes that whatever DNA uh, comes back it would exclude those two uh, troopers as being uh, contributors to the, the unknown sources of DNA. So what the Commonwealth is seeking and the reason that the Commonwealth uh, actually uh, filed another uh, motion asking for sort of an expedited uh, response from the defendant is is the hope of the Commonwealth, especially with uh, March 12th jury trial day looming, was uh, my hope was that there would be some sort of agreement that could be come to uh, and a joint proposal to be presented to the court so the court could act on the papers and this testing could be well underway if not already completed by the time that we reached uh, today's court date. That unfortunately was not um, not what happened. Um, so we received the response uh, earlier this week from the defendant. Essentially, most of the proposals uh, that are included within the defendant's opposition are the precise alternative proposals uh, as far as the protocol as the Commonwealth had uh, uh, laid it out. Uh, so as far as the defense uh, not wishing for anybody associated with the state lab or, or a state police to be collecting the sample, that's fine. Uh, we had proposed uh, Ms. Christina Owens simply because uh, she's a civilian member of the crime scene services section. Um, but if it, you know, as long as it's a certified collector, it, it doesn't have to be anybody associated with that. Um, the defendant has some uh, issue with the state police crime lab conducting any of the testing, whether that be generating the sample or doing the comparative testing. Uh, and seems to be uh, fine uh, with that process proceeding at uh, Bodie in Lorton, Virginia, where some other testing related to this case is already being done. Uh, that's fine with the Commonwealth as well. Obviously, that's going to um, prolong things a little bit, I would submit. Um, Do we know that? I mean, what I can say is that um, our office would certainly be inclined to uh, pay whatever additional fees would be necessary to expedite that testing. Um, but as far as the time frame is concerned, I, I really can't say uh, exactly how long that's going to, uh, to, to transpire for. Um, but as far as um, it seems to be sort of the, the main sort of point of contention is the uh, um, defendant's ability or access to the actual sample. Um, that is something I would object to, you know, as far as, particularly in this case, I don't think there's really going to be any question that the samples uh, or the profile that's generated is the profile of the individual troopers. It's going to be collected by an independent certified collector. It's going to be uh, the, you know, the, the DNA profile would be generated at an independent lab. The comparative analysis would be generated at an independent lab. And counsel would certainly have access to those DNA profiles should the defendant wished to, you know, compare it to any other types of, uh, you know, any other 
pieces of evidence or any other you know, DNA that, uh, that either they recovered during their evidence uh, inspection or that was uh, collected uh, by the state police in regard to their investigation. So the need for the actual sample, I'm, I'm not really sure where that comes from and the suggestion that the Commonwealth would have um, more access uh, to it than the defendant would especially if uh, the court is inclined to uh, go with the alternative suggestions of, of the independent collector, the independent uh, generation of the profile, and the independent co uh, comparative analysis. Uh, I really don't see what defendant's access to the samples does uh, in, in, or lends uh, to, to any sort of credulity to the testing or to any further testing uh, that the defendant uh, wishes to conduct. Um, so, so as far as that, I think really the only other sort of uh, disparity or sticking point is the retention. Um, the Commonwealth had suggested uh, the end of the trial process, the reason for that versus uh, what the defendant is suggesting as far as the conclusion of the appellate process is obviously the close of the trial process has a much more definitive end frame to it as opposed to the appellate process that could go on for months and years if, if not after. <clears throat> and given um, the limited nature for which the Commonwealth is, is seeking um, the consent of these troopers to conduct this DNA uh, analysis, it certainly made more sense to myself uh, and to the Commonwealth as far as setting that time period if, if the court wishes to alter that to the to the conclusion of the appellate process. Uh, there are other mechanisms I would suggest that the defendants uh, you know could avail themselves of should they have a need for you know again the profile would exist you know sort of in, in perpetuity um, in their possession um, at least until uh, the end of the appellate process and there are obviously uh, far more mechanisms available today than there have been in previous years as to post-conviction uh, discovery and, and you know obtaining further samples things of that nature so again that was the reason for the suggestion for the end of the trial court process um, but um, a, a, again the purpose of this motion was to seek the court's guidance uh, as to exactly what the uh, parameters of, of that collection, retention, destruction, and all of that would be uh, so that that can be uh, presented to the troopers so that they can make an intelligent decision as far as their consent is concerned. If, the, um, if this were ordered to be done at the state lab, when would the results be in? Um, that, I think, especially given um, just prior turnaround time in relation to other testing that's been done in this case, um, at the state lab, um, I would hope um, that that could be completed within six, six, seven weeks, something like that, at okay. the most. Okay. Uh, do you want me to hear from Ms. Lundgren now or after? I mean, this is your motion. Do you want me to hear from her now? Um, I think that's fine as far as the order's concerned. Okay. Gretchen Lundgren, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Thank you for hearing from me on behalf of Sergeant Buchanan and Trooper Proctor um, in a discussion as their privacy interests as it relates to the Commonwealth's motion for a protective order. The proposed protective order strikes a balance between protecting the sensitive and personal DNA information of two individuals who are not alleged to have had anything to do with the death of John O'Keefe while giving all parties access to the resulting scientific DNA analysis. The defense's opposition casts the proposed protective order as allowing the Commonwealth to obtain, test, and analyze the samples without giving them the same opportunity, but that's simply not the case. There are areas of significant agreement between the parties here. Both parties are willing to have an independent law enforcement officer obtain the DNA sample. Both parties are willing to have an independent lab develop the DNA profile and conduct the comparative analysis. Both parties will receive the same reports and underlying data. Once an independent lab develops the DNA profiles, Your Honor, there should be no need for anybody to have access to the sample thereafter. And with an independent lab conducting the comparative analysis, there should be no need for anyone to have to conduct further testing. And finally, Your Honor, once the trial is over, 
there should be no need for those DNA materials to be on file. And as Mr. Lally said, the legislature has provided a mechanism for obtaining third-party DNA post-conviction. So there's certainly a safety net there if the DNA is needed um, post-trial. Your Honor, protecting the trooper's DNA samples and profiles through these procedures and protocols poses no violations of the Commonwealth's mandatory discovery obligations. The Commonwealth and the defense would be on equal footing with regard to the trooper's DNA evidence. Each party is free to argue the implication of the results at trial as they see fit. As Your Honor can appreciate, my clients are under no obligation whatsoever to provide their DNA in this matter, but they seek to take steps to demonstrate the integrity of their handling of the taillight evidence. In order to provide consent knowingly and voluntarily, they're looking for certainty surrounding who has access to their DNA, how their DNA is handled, and ultimately how their DNA is disposed of. On behalf of my clients, Your Honor, I respectfully request that you issue the protective order proposed by the Commonwealth. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Yanetti, it sounds, when I read your opposition, I did not know that there was this much agreement. Did you when you filed it? Um, I did not, and quite frankly, uh, hearing the argument from both counsel, I think there's even more agreement uh, than I anticipated. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Your Honor. What do you disagree with? Okay, so our, our, our position, Your Honor, is uh, at this point, with regard to the DNA samples versus the DNA profiles. So where are you in your uh, opposition? What page? So uh, I'm actually going to the Commonwealth's motion itself with regard to um, uh, how the DNA samples and profiles will be uh, treated. Okay. Um, we did not realize that the Commonwealth was drawing a distinction between the actual samples themselves and the profiles that were generated. It was our understanding that the Commonwealth was seeking to prohibit the defense from having access to either. Uh, but I've just Okay, heard, but they're not. Exactly. I've heard Mr. Lally say today that they will turn over the profile to us. That satisfies us. Okay, I have a question for you. Yes. Since you mentioned Bodhi Laboratories, you're the first one that mentions it in the pleadings. How long will it take? Uh, uh, we're not the first ones that mention it. The Commonwealth mentioned it in their motion, and we agreed to that. All right, I don't have that. Your Honor, it is, it is one of the alternatives that the Commonwealth had. I'm, I'm sorry, I can find that. Okay, the... so we need to find the paper number. All right, uh, but we need to know how quickly that can be done, and we need to see about expediting it. Um, Typical for Bodhi, um, just because I've, I've recently gone through that with regard to the hair sample. Right. Um, it's, uh, I think, like a 12 to 14 week turnaround without any sort of expedition. Um, so, you know, I, expediting, I don't know that necessarily that can be cut in half, uh, but it is something that I, I think can be turned around a little bit quicker than their, their typical turnaround time. And Ms. Lundgren, you'll have your clients available, you know, at the drop of a hat to provide this sample? Yes, Your All right, so go ahead, Ms. Tiena. Thank you. Uh, so, Your Honor, I think the only real conflict at this point, if the Commonwealth is holding to their motion, is their paragraph 7, uh, which states the defendant is not permitted to conduct independent analysis or testing with either Sergeant Buchnick's or Trooper Proctor's DNA samples or profiles. Now, clearly, we won't do that with regard to the samples because we won't have them. We don't need them. Uh, but we will have the DNA profiles, Your Honor. Um, and once we do, um, they, uh, in my view, uh, in my client's view, um, we should be able to use them for any case-related purpose. We have no interest in, um, you know, distributing them anywhere or doing anything with them. Hold on. Ms. Lundgren, I think you should answer this. Why don't you come on up? Is there an opposition to that? Uh, there, I just need you in front of a microphone. Uh, there's one right here. Thank you. She could take this mic if she likes. No, because you, you will be going back and forth, oh, okay. so you should stay there. Um, there is an opposition, Your Honor. I mean, I think perhaps the Commonwealth can speak to it. I think there's also a, a strategic decision, um, a case-related decision. Certainly, we agree with the privacy interests that the troopers are providing their DNA for a specific reason and with regard to a specific item in this case. Um, and they do want to limit that consent. However, 
that is more, I believe, a, a case-related and strategic reason that I would also defer to the Commonwealth to okay. speak to. All right, I'll hear from Mr. Lally afterwards. Go ahead. No, not now. Uh, I'll uh, hear from Ms. Giannetti to finish. Right. So, so there is other evidence in this case um, th where comparative uh, testing, DNA testing, could be done. Um, and in addition, Your Honor, I want to make it clear that our investigation has been ongoing and is ongoing to this day. Uh, we may come into possession of evidence related to this case, physical evidence, that we may want to do our own comparative testing on. Uh, and once, once those profiles are released, uh, assuming that there's consent and that uh, the Commonwealth comes into uh, possession of a DNA profile, and the defense does as well by let Mr. Lally's admission today, um, that should be evidence that either side can use for any proper purpose that is case related. So we should not be prohibited from either re requesting or doing our own uh, comparative analysis from those DNA profiles if it relates to the case. What do you want to say, Mr. Lally? We're, we're talking hypotheticals here. We are. Right? So what I would say is the only other identified evidence uh, really, uh, or the bulk of it as far as DNA is concerned, concerns Mr. O'Keefe's clothing, which I, I don't understand what any relevance that would have pertaining to the trooper's DNA profiles. As it pertains to what ifs, uh, as far as any sort of other physical evidence that, that counsel would come into possession to, uh, you know, the protective order, while you know, somewhat ironclad, is not necessarily cement. So I, if, if there's a request for a modification based on subsequent evidence or something like that, I think that's something that the court can obviously entertain uh, at that point. But really, the purpose of this is, is with reference to that one specific item. It, it does make sense that if there is something later, you come before me on it. Well. So that's why I asked you if it's hypothetical. If you have an item that you know you want to test, I think the Commonwealth has every right to know what that item is. Okay. Our, our position would be that we should be able to conduct our own investigation in private and reveal the results of those investigations, of that investigation, should we desire to. Uh, we have a different ethical duty than the Commonwealth. Clearly, if there's uh, any evidence that the Commonwealth possesses that we'd like to do comparative testing on, we have no choice but to notify the Commonwealth and resolve any disputes before this court. But, but if we come into possession of uh, anything that we believe is related to this case and should be tested, we don't believe that's any business of the Commonwealth to interject in that. We will have the profile at that point. We can do our own testing and then uh, reveal the results of that testing should we, should we desire to. All right. Does the Commonwealth want to be heard? No, Your Honor. All right. May, may we have just a quick second, Your Honor? Yep. My co-counsel brings up a, big, a, a good point, which is um, after uh, months and months and months of requesting access to the physical evidence, we finally uh, appeared at the Norfolk County DA's office on December 1st of, the, of 2023 uh, with our uh, uh, forensic uh, DNA collection uh, expert, um, and he did swabbings of multiple, multiple uh, pieces of evidence. So we, we do have those in our possession. All right. I had no idea what you were talking about when you were saying hypothetically. Well, there, there are two separate issues. There's, there are the, uh, the, the items that we've swabbed that we should be able to test. And if we have the, the DNA profiles of these troopers, there should be nothing prohibiting us from testing them. And by the way, the Commonwealth has the ability to do the exact same testing on their own. Um, and then if there's any other evidence, um, I still maintain that we should be able to uh, do comparative testing on that as well. All right. Who, the, let's get the samples going. Let's do that. Uh, and I'll figure out the rest of this. But let's get the, who do you have in mind for an independent collector? 
You know, I, I don't have anyone specific in mind, but you know, most local police departments have at least someone who is a you know detective who is a certified collector. I just is there someone the defendant, the two of you work out something. I, I don't have any uh, issue with working out something with Mr. Lally. All right, so let's do let's do it today. That sounds good. All right, and Ms. Lundgren, you'll make your witnesses available immediately. Yes, yes Your Honor. But I just, for sake of clarification, just trying to understand. And as Mr. Lally said, they have not provided their consent yet. They are waiting to okay. hear what the, the boundaries of the um, proposed protective order will be in order to provide that, you know, knowing and voluntary consent. Okay. So, I mean, we could certainly potentially do the samples and hold them in abeyance and not release them if the court was willing to have them destroyed should the troopers decide not to provide consent based on the, the bounds of the protective order. But... Um, certainly, I think they do need to know what those terms are before moving forward. All right, I need to. I need to look at this. I'll do it as quickly as I can. All right, is that it on this? Yes, Your Honor. On All this right. motion, yes. 